Hello everyone, my name is Anton Pelcher. I'm an engineer and I've been building fish farms for more than 10 years. In the comments to my videos on my Russian YouTube channel, my subscribers started addressing me with the following questions. Anton, to construct a large farm, investing 500,000, 1 million US dollars is certainly cool and appealing. But can you make a video on something more down to earth, with a smaller budget, a farm that could be set up by almost anyone? I thought about it, and today we're going to show you such a farm. We will travel to Yaroslavl region of Russia, to a mini rest farm for African catfish, which has the capacity of 20 tons per year. Be sure to watch this video to the end, because I will tell you about how we implemented this project, from the beginning up to the end, step by step, how we manufactured and assembled this rest farm. And of course, I will show you what it looks like, how it operates and looks like now. Well, by the way, if you would also like to see a video about a mini rest farm that can be located within 100-200 square meters space, then press the like button. Here we go! Well, I'll start telling you about this farm while we're still on the way. It's located right in the city of Yaroslavl. And that is its distinctive feature, as it's located not outside the city, but right within the city limits. And the second distinctive feature, in addition to the fact that it's a mini rest farm, is that it was installed inside the rented facility. I've been asked a lot about rented spaces. Is it good or bad? Profitable or unprofitable for setting up a rest farm? Let's visit it today and have a closer look at it. And let me say a couple of words about our customer. His name is Vladimir, and he came to us about two years ago. So we met him, and at the time he was in the coffee business, which was his main business line. I honestly don't know what exactly he was doing in coffee business. Maybe wholesale suppliers, coffee machine sales, some type of vending business. Well, he treated me to some very good coffee. He was interested in the subject of farming fish, basically learned about this business from the internet. Nothing, shall we say, special. And he had some space for that. More precisely, he had a warehouse, which was located in a spacious building. But this was rented, not in his property. And he had the possibility to rent additional space right next to the main warehouse, with an area of around 200 square meters. So, addressed us with this idea. The first step we implemented was the design works. The design part took a little bit more than a month. We started on the 25th of September 2019 and finished on the 30th of October that very year, in total a month and five days. It could have been done in parallel with equipment production, but the customer wanted to agree on all the design solutions first and then proceed to equipment production. In general, we were not against that, so we did it that way. Once he approved the design, we proceeded to equipment production. In parallel, the designers worked out 3D models, that is, design documentation, where roll pipe and all fittings were included. At the same time, production work started. What equipment did we produce for him? The drum filter was made at our production site, which means we assembled them ourselves. We bought a flushing pump for it from Pedrolo Company. And by the way, for this farm, we bought all the main pumps from the Italian company Pedrolo. In my opinion, these are great pumps for small farms. They're quite energy efficient. They're always available. And most importantly, they're really reliable. They operate for years without failures. Many farms that we have installed have practically no problems with these pumps. Unlike, by the way, many Chinese pond pumps that sometimes are installed at mini rest farms. Nevertheless, we prefer to order Italian ones. Biofilter. We welded the tank from polypropylene right on the side. Inside, we equipped it with everything that was needed. False bottom, screens, everything we needed to keep the media inside. We put diffusers, as well as air blowers from Estvac. We cooperate with them. They're good guys, offering reliable equipment. No complaints at all. And it's cheaper than German-Italian analogs. In this case, we purchased them in Russia. But of course, these blowers are produced outside Russia. Next, a thin layer settling tank. We bought ready-made modules, which is easier than assembling them ourselves. And at the same time, the tank itself, all the stainless steel elements, polypropylene, all that was produced at our manufacturing facility. And by the way, the drum filter is also lowered to this thin layer settling tank. We also produced the ultraviolet disinfection unit. We welded a stainless steel case, as we always do. We made all the connections. 
put a professional industrial amalgam lamp of 500 watts. Very good lamp, works fine. The heat exchanger. At the time we didn't yet manufacture these units ourselves. We bought a flow-through heat exchanger for 28 kilowatts, as far as I remember, from Xenozone. But we assembled all the automation for this heat exchanger ourselves. The control panel was completed by our company. We provided for a microcontroller, frequency converters, all the necessary accessories, a metal switchboard, all the temperature sensors, a screen to display the temperature, everything that was needed. Well, we basically completed the control panel. We also welded the biofilter on site, so it was actually a part of the installation works, though this is naturally the equipment. It took about two and a half months to produce the equipment. In other words, we started on November 20th and finished on February 12th, which is a little bit over two months. If there had been no long New Year holidays, we would have accomplished everything in two months. The next step was to coordinate the delivery and proceed the installation works. While we were coordinating some issues with the customer, he was preparing the space for this installation. It took us some time, because we only started the installation work in March. What did we do? Well, naturally, all the equipment was delivered. First, we welded the fish holding tanks and the biofilter tank. That is, all those tanks that need to be welded on the side. Step 2. We placed all the equipment. After that, we tied all the equipment with pipelines. Thus, we assembled the line. The most prolonged process is piping or strapping another wood. And we connected all rice equipment with pipelines. Next, we connected electrical power to rice line. Thus, we installed the control panel, connected all the equipment to the panel, and connected the panel to the power supply. We checked the operation of all the automation. Then we filled the system with water and performed hydraulic tests. But of course, we had to check if any of the pipes were leaking, if everything was hermetic and pressure tight. Then we run the equipment idle. That is just with water. The system was working for a few days to see if there were any problems, any failures. After that, we poured reagents to start by a filter. By a filter was launched chemically. It normally takes 3-4 weeks. We put there soda, source of ammonia, source of nitrites, a little bit of fish feed, bacteria, and all this was infused there for 3-4 weeks. Well, by the end of April, the farm was generally ready for launching. In the meantime, the customer was coordinating fry delivery to the farm. In May, there was a grand opening with the city administration involved, because actually it was the first such farm in the whole Yaroslav region of Russia. Even the representative of Church was presented this opening. The farm was pomposely launched in May. And now we're going to come and find out what has happened at this farm during more than a year period. What's happened there? How does the farm operate now? What are its challenges? So we're approaching the building. It's actually an unremarkable warehouse trading space of about 3,000 square meters. It houses quite a lot of companies, from a car service center to some kind of wholesale vegetable store. From the outside, you'd never guess that an African catfish farm can be located there. And by the way, this building is right in the city, near the city historical center, as I have mentioned before. So it's a little bit out of the ordinary. And here we're in front of this building. In fact, there are two floors and a basement. The total building area is 4,500 square meters. And just imagine, the fish farm occupies only 3-5% of the total building area. Come on, I'll show you around. We'll see this farm. Let's go inside. Here is the sign with the name. Right here, behind that door, our many farm is located. It's actually about 200 square meters. Out of that, 100 square meters is the rest system itself. Another 100 square meters are occupied by the feed storage and various utility rooms. Right behind this wall, the rest system is located. You can hear the noise from the rest equipment. But before we get inside, I would like to say a few words about how our customer prepared the whole space. I'm now standing in the main room of the farm. Directly behind me is the area where the whole rice facility is installed. What did our customer do? He first petitioned of that area with sandwich panels. Its thickness is quite common for Russia, 80 mm. All that was done in order to completely separate the area where rice itself was installed. And around me, these are the utility lines where the feed is stored. Also, there is some office space. 
Let's go and see other engineering systems, utility lines that he has connected to get this base ready for installation of RAS equipment. We will start with the fact that he put in a water treatment system. Despite the fact that there is a central water supply, the water is not of high quality. The concentration of iron is elevated, so we had to put in a deironing system. And of course, the removal of chlorine was indispensable, because in any municipal water supply system in this country, water is constantly being chlorated. If chlorine suddenly gets into the system, and we have had this happen, the first thing it will kill is the bacteria on the biofilter. That's why this cannot be allowed to happen. And that's why there is an additional chlorine protection installed here. And of course, this water storage tank, because the water pipeline is the only source of water supply. And if suddenly water supply is disconnected, it will be have negative impact on the farm, because there will be no makeup water. That's why the collecting tank has been installed here. And the volume of makeup water from this tank will be enough for at least a day or even two. In case the water supply is cut off, we can use this reserve. It's already prepared, and from this tank, water is distributed to rest system itself. And of course, he installed heating. Even though there is central heating, there was a need for a standby heating source in case the central heating is cut off or in case it's not sufficient. Because no one really knew at the very beginning whether this heating would be enough or not. In fact, this electric boiler was hardly even switched on. Nevertheless, the heating circuit does exist, and this small electric boiler can also be switched on and used at any moment when it's needed. And of course, there has always been an electric panel, which has always been hanging there. It supplies power to the control panel and all the equipment from the panel. A small feed storage room. This room was also detached by the partition, so formerly it was a common area. Now here a storage area for various instruments is located, as well as a feed storage area. In fact, here is much more space than it's really needed. In fact, probably 50% of this area is used, no more than that. Now let's go to the farm. I'll show you the equipment. I'll show you the core of the farm. The essential that you are probably watching this video for in the first place. Here we are, at last, in the heart of this farm, where the fish holding tanks are and where all RAS equipment is located. Let me first tell you about the tanks. There are a total of seven tanks. Two of which are fry tanks, one purging tank and four grower tanks. Grower tanks are 2.4 meters in diameter and 1.5 meters in height, and fry and purging tanks are 2 meters in diameter and 1.5 meters in height. In total, the volume of all the tanks here is a little bit over 30 cubic meters. Let's take 35. And these tanks, about 15-20 tons of grower fish per year, are farmed now. And finally, let's talk about the rust equipment installed at this farm. Here we have fish inside the tanks. Here it's eating, releasing suspended solids into the water. What's next? The next step is very simple. Rust system also includes water treatment and recirculation. Water flows from the fish holding tanks through pipes like this one, first into this structure called the thin layer settling tank. Very often we used it on African catfish. It's a wonderful unit. It doesn't require electrical power supply. Inside it, inside this tank, there are inclined tubes. Water rises up through these inclined tubes and large particles, more than 100 microns. And when farming African catfish, believe me, there are a lot of them are settled and discharged into that inclined helper at the bottom of this tank. And then operator just turns the tap, and all this sediment is discharged from the system once or twice a day. But this is not the only mechanical water treatment unit, because the African catfish really meets a lot of impurities. Next, water flows through the pipes by gravity into this tank, where the drum filter is located. What is a drum filter? I think a lot of people who watch this channel, who are in this business, know very well. It's a structure that has a drum inside. The drum is covered with a special micro mesh. In this case, its size is 100 microns. The filter has a capacity of 80 cubic meters per hour. That is, when the actual water exchange is 30 cubic meters per hour, the filter has 80 cubic meters per hour. We always do that on African catfish, because there is a huge amount of suspended solids in the system. I will stress it once again. So water flows inside the drum. Suspended sediment is detained by the mesh. Once the mesh is clocked, the water level inside the drum rises and the flushing is triggered. The drum is rotated by a special gear motor. A flushing pump delivers water under high pressure through special nozzles to the drum. And actually, water flushes all the dirt into the sewage system. In this way, it removes not only cost suspended solids, as a thin layer settling tanks does, but also finds suspended matter. Well, now the water is treated from mechanical suspended matter. That is, the dirt that can somehow be deposited and retained on the mesh is removed from the system. Is that all? Of course not. Water still needs to be treated biologically. So, if this is the lowest point of the system, the pumps are switched on. These are two 750 watts Italian pumps. 
One working, the other standby. They pump water after it flows out of the drum filter. They pump it through the ultraviolet unit first, so that water is also disinfected. Well, as I always mentioned in my videos, using ultraviolet at the African catfish farms is optional. Because, first of all, African catfish practically doesn't get sick. Secondly, water is turbid enough, so in general, disinfection at such fish may not be installed. But nevertheless, this disinfection is often put at such farms for better guarantee. The water is then fed to these two biofilters. Water biofilters. I think a lot of people who are watching my videos know it very well. They contain plastic pellets, which is called media. One is operating on fixed media, the other one on sinking media. First, the water is supplied to the fixed media biofilter. The diffusers are placed on the bottom. This is the tank that is 4 cubic meters on media inside. It's 2.5 meters in diameter, 2.5 meters high and it's filled with media by 50%. The blower supplies air. The media is constantly being aerated. The bacteria that inhabit the media convert the ammonia first to nitrites and then to nitrates. After this biofilter, the water flows by the next biofilter. The next is sinking media biofilter. The sinking media lies statically on a special false bottom, and this biofilter is equipped with double bottom. The tank is exactly the same, 2.5 in diameter, 2.5 in height. There are 5 cubic meters of sinking media here. Water flows from top to the bottom through the media layer, and apart from the biological treatment itself, this filter also acts as an additional mechanical water treatment unit. That is, biofilm gets into it, those impurities that were not trapped by the drum filter. All this settles on this sinking media. Therefore, when it accumulates the impurities, it's periodically blown out with air to drain the dirt. And I guess I should show you the rest. I'll show you the blowers. The blowers are hanging on that wall over there. They supply the air to blow out this filter, as well as for the constant aeration of the fixed bed biofilter. This is the control panel. It controls all RAS equipment. You can see the buttons. Automatic and manual operation of pumps and other equipment. This is the temperature sensor. I don't know whether it's cheating now or not, but it's really warm here. 32 degrees Celsius. Even for African catfish, it's an elevated temperature. By the way, no separate heating systems are working right now. Just the equipment that is in this room, it emits enough heat to ensure that the temperature here is normal for farming of this type of fish. Let's talk about the numbers. As I mentioned earlier, there are about 35 cubic meters of water in these tanks. There are about 7,000 fish of different weight inside these tanks, starting with fry that has been stocked recently. Then there is fish of 500 grams and 1,000 grams, that is the fish which is already up for sale. In this way, they achieve uniform. Equal sale of fish throughout the year. The equipment consumes between 3 and 5 kilowatts of electricity per hour. Not just the equipment, but the whole farm, including utility lines, lighting, ventilation. That is, we looked at the specific bill from the power supply company. When there is little fish in the system and the weather is optimal, energy consumption is 3 kilowatts. When there is a lot of fish and it's cold or on the contrary hot inside, then it's 5 kilowatts. Regarding water, the average daily consumption we also just looked at it from the meters as 6 cubic meters per day. This is 15-20% of the total volume of water in the fish tanks, which is in principle normal for an African catfish rearing system. Let's now talk about the production plan, fry and feed. I'm now standing in front of the feed storage, that is the feed used at this particular farm. Judging by the red packaging, those who are knowledgeable will understand that it's Aquarex Russian local producer. Our customer has tried different feeds, those produced in the CIS countries, as well as in the different regions of Russia. In fact, he opted for the local producer from the Tver region of Russia. At least I can see that. First, it guarantees decent quality. Secondly, it was just convenient from the point of view of delivery, logistics. Now the feed conversion ratio is 1.1, that is, if they have 20 tons of crayfish to be grown, we need to buy about 22 tons of feed. They usually buy it once a month, or once every few months, it's easier that way from the delivery point of view. Well, the less often they buy, the cheaper the logistics is. The more often they buy, the fresher the feed is, it's not stored for a long time, and money is spent uniformly, so balance should be always be observed. The next is fry. 
According to the production plan, Frey is stocked here every three months. That means stocking four times a year. It's easy enough to buy. There are a number of farms in the central part of Russia, and in general in the whole European part, where you can buy 10 grams fry and stock it. To grow 20 tons of fish, with an average weight of 1.5 kilograms, they need about 15,000 pieces of fry, also taking into account some waste. By the way, there are about 7,000 pieces of fry in the tanks now. Our customer has decided to increase and stock 7,000 pieces of fry at once, meaning at one stocking cycle. So, they stock 15,000 pieces of fry to grow 20 tons of fish. Taking into account all the waste, we divide the fry into batches of 4,000 pieces a year. They stock every three months, which means each batch turns out to be about 4,000 pieces. They stock it first into the fry tanks, and then it grows there during about five months until it reaches the grow-out weight of 1.5 kilograms, when they actually start selling it. Although, in fact, African catfish can be solved even a little earlier, they established very successful sales of the fish from 1 kilogram onwards. In order to achieve uniform sales of fish throughout the year, each batch must be sold within three months. What does this mean? It means that they start to sell fish when it weighs 1.5 kilograms, and they go on selling it for three months, till the fish weighs 2.53 kilograms. And then, when the first batch ends up and sold, it's gradually replaced by the second. The second is replaced by the third, and thus they have year-round sales. Generally speaking, this is the optimum production plan that can be achieved at such a farm. Now let's talk about marketing and sales. I always say that African catfish is impossible or almost impossible to sell in live or chilled form. But at this farm, all fish is now released unprocessed, only in live or chilled form. Who buys that? Wholesalers, processors, restaurants. And what is left is sold in retail, via internet advertising. As far as the economics of this farm is concerned, I think it will also be interesting for you. And let's start with the fact that in total, the owner invested around 55,000 US dollars. From this total amount, about 12,000 US dollars was spent on the facility preparation, the construction and laying utility lines. 42,000 US dollars were invested into the equipment together with installation, delivery, and launching. In other words, about 55,000 US dollars were invested into this farm. And now we'll talk about how much this fish farm produces per year. Last year, around 15 tons of fish have been grown and sold from the farm. Is that much or little? Well, that's not the maximum. Probably because, to begin with, this farm had to basically ramp up and reach stable sales. But at the same time, it's already quite good. Now the farm is getting steady operating profit. Why is it just operating profit? It's very simple. Because it's a rented space, and a great share of this profit is literally absorbed by the rent payments. That's to rent this space, pay for it. And it's noteworthy that RAS equipment occupies only 100 square meters, and they have to pay for 200 square meters at their utility rooms as well. That's why, by the way, our customer is now thinking about bringing the capacity of this farm to the maximum, that is, to boost this facility so that it can produce more. Firstly, because sales have increased recently, and secondly, in order to increase the income. And now we move on to the issue of operating costs and production costs. What are they at an African catfish farm? Operating costs include feed, water supply, since it's centralized here. Feed costs about 1 US dollar per kilogram. Water supply around 80 cents per cubic meter. Electricity around 7 cents per kilowatt. And also rent and staff costs. Our customer hired a couple of employees part-time, but nevertheless, he engaged them. As for the fish prime cost, I can't publish or announce these data, because after all, this is a specific farm, it's a commercial confidential information. But I will say that under similar conditions, the prime cost of any similar farm could be around 1.8 to US dollars per kilogram. But since the rental payments are now decreasing, the issue of reaching not only operating profit stage, but already decent business, commercial profit is becoming the primary one. And now I'll just answer the question of whether it's worth renting area or it's better to construct your own building. Well, there is no definite answer. 
I guess it all depends on the ultimate purposes. If your purpose is to try this business with minimal investment, then this kind of rented area to locate your facility is the best option. You rented it. You didn't buy it. You prepared, adjusted this area to optimally accommodate a fish farm with minimal blood, minimal effort. You launched the system, set up sales, start getting first profit, and only then you move to your own belly. Because still operating a farm on rented areas is still, shall we say, a temporary solution. That's why all those who set up their farms at rent rented spaces, think about and plan relocating the already launched facility to their own building. As soon as sales are established and are not at risk, as soon as there is understanding of technology, when there is an understanding of how and where to expand, it's much easier to do that than when you just start from scratch. Then it's reasonable to get involved into the construction works and equipment relocation. And practically everyone has the same idea. So in my opinion, this is a logical and normal solution. You may ask, what should be done with the building? Money has been invested, the equipment is installed, the company is successfully operating, everything seems to be fine with sales, but the profit seems to be not as high as the owner would like it to be. Well, there are a few options. The first one is to increase capacity. And by the way, you have seen that in one of my last videos. You will learn the final option of increase the capacity of this farm, which we will agree on with the farmer. We will squeeze all out of this farm. Our customer will finally get not 15, 20, but 30 tons of fish without any significant equipment upgrade. This is the first thing that can increase the efficiency and profitability of this farm. The second thing, of course, is going into processing. Once you just get into this business, generally you start selling fish live and chilled. But when you increase the capacity of your farm, you might need to go into processing. And this way, there is a certain opportunity to increase profit. So when you add value to the product, it goes up in price. Your margins also increase, and you can get a more robust economics, as you can sell some of the product in the processed form, including deep processing. By the way, I will illustrate this in my coming videos. And the third, of course, is a slightly longer-term plan – to relocate the farm into the building which will be owned by our customer. Thus, it's actually building his own farm. Yes, it's a large investment, and the amount of money to invest it's not easy to gather. But nevertheless, this is the solution which sooner or later will be approached by the farmer, step by step, because there is no other way. This is a rental property, and once he will want to improve the economy. So, relocating the farm, increasing capacity is the final step that gives further development to this business. Well, that's probably it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, press the like button, subscribe to my channel. This is Anton Pelcher, and my channel is about how to grow fish and make good money from it. Bye!